Uh, let us give this few minutes for the speeches from the selected uh, kids from ID camp. And these speeches are the expression of their heart. None wrote right for them. So let us listen to what they have to say. Deputy Special Representative of the Secretary General, President Coordinator, and Humanitarian Coordinator in South Sudan, Sarah Besselianti. Your Holiness Pope Francis, I am honored to be here today with you, with the Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, with your esteemed delegations and the people of South Sudan, all protocol observed. This is a momentous opportunity to draw the world's attention to the situation in South Sudan at a time when multiple humanitarian crises are emerging concurrently. The humanitarian context in South Sudan is worrying. For over a decade, the South Sudanese people have experienced conflict, social and political instability, climate shocks, violence, displacement, food insecurity, lack of education, opportunities, and access to healthcare systems. Today in South Sudan, over two million people are displaced across the country and an additional two million are refugees outside the country. South Sudan ranks fourth on the list of world's most neglected displacement crises. It is also the largest refugee crisis in Africa. Extreme levels of food insecurity and malnutrition affect two-thirds of the country's population. This situation makes South Sudan one of the worst food emergencies globally. An estimated 8 million people are expected to experience food insecurity in 2023. In addition to this insecurity, fueled by intercommunal violence, crime and impunity continue to hamper South Sudan's peace efforts. Women and girls are extremely vulnerable to sexual and gender-based violence, and they risk being violated while carrying out their daily routines. Children risk being abducted, recruited in local armed groups, or being trafficked. Access to justice and the rule of law are limited for many people who experience crimes and violations. The cumulative impact of four consecutive years of above normal rainfall has contributed to the destruction and damaging of people's lives and livelihoods. Such climate shocks exacerbate the already dire situation. While people's needs are increasing, the resources available to support them are dwindling. In 2023, humanitarian partners will need $1.7 billion to meet the needs of 6.8 million people. Given the lack of resources, everyday humanitarians must make difficult choices in prioritizing only those with the most acute needs. Such decision-making is heartbreaking given the depth of vulnerability and needs. Your Holiness, since my arrival in South Sudan at the beginning of 2022, I have traveled across the country and witnessed firsthand people suffering. I have visited sites for the displaced and people impacted by floods and conflict. I have had heart-to-heart -heart conversations with women and youth and community leaders. I have seen children who live in heartbreaking conditions. I have looked into the eyes of their mothers and witnessed the pain they feel for the plight of their children. Despite all of this, they have greeted me with kindness, smiles, and expressions of hope. During my visits, women have highlighted the experiences of gender-based violence, chronic health issues, and lack of education. They plead for the return of peace and opportunities for their children. Your Holiness, I can attest, it is the women, the children, the elderly, the people with disabilities who suffer the most. Beyond their painful stories, I see opportunities for us to support the affected communities in achieving their potential. The need for peace is consistent as an ask among all the people I meet. Whether it's women groups in WOW, working on community cohesion and agriculture, or displaced men and women in Bentu, or Malakau, the call for peace is overwhelming. If 
the women of South Sudan are given an opportunity to develop, to have space to be productive, South Sudan will transform. Women are the key to transformation, and they can lead their communities towards a better future. Only when there is peace, children will be able to reach their full potential, and people will be able to live a life of dignity, joining coexistence and community while celebrating differences. We also need respect for humanitarian principles and the international humanitarian law. Humanitarians are working around the clock to respond to the urgent needs of the affected communities. However, security challenges often force staff members to relocate and activities to pause until the situation has improved. South Sudan continues to be the most dangerous context for aid workers, followed by Afghanistan and Syria. In 2022, over 390 incidents against humanitarians were reported. Nine humanitarians lost their lives in the line of duty. I call on all stakeholders to respect the international humanitarian law and human rights law and ensure safe and unhindered access by humanitarians to the affected people. Despite the challenges we face, we'll continue to deepen our efforts with our partners across the humanitarian peace and development spectrum to support the people of South Sudan on their path to prosperity and peace. We will also continue to work closely with the government of South Sudan to enhance our joint efforts to positively impact people's lives. This is not only our job, but also our purpose. We are here to serve the people of South Sudan, conscious of our limitations, but aware of the opportunities. Your Holiness, you represent a symbol of hope for millions of people across the globe, and you bring with you a message of peace to South Sudan. Through your visits, my hope is renewed that if we all work together, the people of South Sudan can achieve peace and meet the potential of this incredible country. I believe that, and I pray for that. I thank you. Lord, I thank the Lord Jesus who has given me this chance. We are standing for you. Our video leader and the Christian who have come for this group like this. My name is Joseph Dakar Mashangi. I'm the first Christian, Christian and Northern Western Apanar first division. I'm 16 years old. I arrived at the protection of Smilian camp in Bitu with my parents in May 2018. And I have been living in the camp for more than eight years old. I complete my primary education. And my dream is to continue the school. We have got I ended at the POC camp, ate of it, and grew up there. My life in the camp is not easy, and I am very worried about how my life and the life of the other children will be in the future. Throughout this year, my parents and I. Other where other those displaced families have 
be able to survive because of humanitarian aid. If there had been peace, I would have been in my home or organ, live but alive and enjoy my childhood. Why are we serving in the ITV camp? Because of, of the ongoing conflict in our country, the youngest development country. We have been also affected by flood since 2020. And some of the family have been displaced from their village and town. Those their leaves soft and cloth. Therefore, I am appearing to our leader in this great nation of South Sudan to bring lasting peace, love, unity, and prosperity to our country. I am asking you our religious leader to continue praying my last loving peace in South Sudan. May God listen to our prayer. My name is Johnson, Kima Alex. I belong to the Episcopal Church of South Sudan. I am 14 years old. I live in Block P, Chapter 2 of Malakal, protecting civilian camp. I am a student in Prime Minister. I live in POC with my mother and my father. They do not have but but one of my uncle he sent help from Juba when he sent the money and Get money and buy and I buy some clothes. I came to the POC in 2014 because of problem in Malacca town. Peace is good. Problem. Are not in. We want a peace so that peace and we go back to Malacca, back to the house 
life in POC is not good, but is the area is more guarded. There is not a lot space to leave the body, to place the body. Many children did not go to school because there are not enough teachers in school for us. I want to help good future where there is peace, space, peace and children and can go to school. Life in the POC is not good, but we thank the UN. Because this, they give us protection and food. We want to go to in the church to pray so that God give us peace. And we thank God. Thank God. Like that's 
sing and sing in Burman. This is how we praise God who is always with us. Continue to teach us to be friends of Jesus and continue to speak for our people so we can all be together in peace. Loving Father, you welcome your children. Draw into your arms these young people. May they be close to you and comforted by you. May they know your kingdom even as they see and experience the sufferings of our world. May they be the ones who take us by the hand and lead us closer towards your glory. Grant your children the strength and protection of your presence. Lord Jesus, who fled persecution as a baby, you know confusion and chaos. You faced the cruelty of your people. On the cross you died for your enemies and brought us all to new everlasting life. Grant us your humility and your holiness and walk with us on the heavy path of the cross that leads to eternal joy with you. Holy Spirit, who brings life to the places of darkness, love to hearts of hate, hope to a world of fear and despair, rest in our hearts today. Transform our lives so that we might transform our world. May your fire burn away all hatred and bitterness, fear and enmity, and set us alight with your love, your justice, and your peace. Amen.
pensato a voi a lungo, portando nel cuore il desiderio di incontrarvi, di guardarvi negli occhi, di stringervi le mani e di abbracciarvi. Finalmente sono qui, insieme ai fratelli con cui condivido questo pellegrinaggio di pace, per dirvi tutta la mia vicinanza e tutto il mio affetto. Sono con voi, soffro per voi, con voi. Joseph, hai posto una domanda decisiva, perché stiamo a soffrire nel campo per forati? Perché, perché tanti bambini e giovani come te stanno lì anziché a scuola a studiare o in un bel posto all'aperto a giocare? Tu stesso ci hai dato la risposta dicendo che a causa dei conflitti in corso nel paese. E proprio a motivo delle devastazioni prodotte dalla violenza umana, oltre che per quelle causate dalle inondazioni che milioni di nostri fratelli e sorelle, come voi, tra cui tantissime mamme con i bambini, hanno dovuto lasciare le loro terre e abbandonare i loro villaggi e le loro case. Purtroppo, in questo martoriato paese, essere scolato o rifugiato è diventato un'esperienza consueta e collettiva. Dear brothers and sisters, good afternoon. Thank you for your prayers, your testimonies and your singing. I have been thinking of you for a long time with a growing desire to have this meeting, to see you face to face, to shake your hands and to embrace you. Now at last, I am here, together with my brothers, on this pilgrimage of peace, to express to you all my closeness, all my affection. I am with you here, and I suffer for you and with you. Joseph, you asked a crucial question. Why do you, why do we have to suffer in a camp for the displaced persons. Why? Why do so many children and young people like you end up here rather than studying in a school or pray, playing in a nice open place? You answered your own question when you say that it is because of the ongoing conflicts in the country due to the devastation caused by human violence as well as that caused by the floods, millions of our brothers and sisters like you, including many mothers with children, have had to leave their lands and abandon their villages and their homes. Sadly, in this war-torn country, being a displaced person or a refugee has become a common and collective experience. Rinnovo perciò con tutte le forze il più accorato appello a far cessare ogni conflitto, a riprendere seriamente il processo di pace perché abbiano fine le violenze e la gente possa tornare a vivere in mondo degno. Solo con la pace, la stabilità e la giustizia potranno esserci sviluppo e reintegrazione sociale, ma non si può più attendere. Non si può più attendere. Un numero enorme di bambini nati in questi anni ha conosciuto soltanto la realtà dei campi per scolati, dimenticando l'aria di casa, perdendo le gare con la propria terra di origine, con le radici e con le tradizioni. Il futuro non può essere nei campi per scolati. C'è bisogno proprio, come chiedevi tu, Johnson, che tutti i ragazzi come te abbiano la possibilità di andare a scuola e pure lo spazio per giocare al calcio. C'è bisogno di crescere come società aperta, mischiandosi, formando un unico popolo attraverso le sfide dell'integrazione, anche imparando le lingue parlate in tutto il paese e non solo nella propria etnia. C'è bisogno di abbracciare il rischio stupendo 
di conoscere e accogliere in te diverso per ritrovare la bellezza di una fraternità riconciliata esprimere l'avventura imparabile di costruire liberamente il proprio avvenire insieme a quello dell'intera comunità e c'è assoluto bisogno di evitare la marginazione dei gruppi la ghettizzazione degli esseri umani ma per tutti questi bisogni c'è bisogno di pace c'è bisogno di pace e c'è bisogno dell'aiuto di tanti dell'aiuto di tutti that is why I want to renew my forceful and heartfelt appeal to end all conflict and to resume the peace process in a serious way so that violence can end and people can, can return to living in dignity only with peace, stability and justice can there be development and social reintegration There is no room for further delay. There is no room for further delay. Great numbers of children born in recent years have known only the reality of camps for displaced persons. They have no memory of what it means to have a home. They are losing their contribution to their native land, their roots and their traditions. The future cannot lie in refugee camps. As you said, Johnson, there is need for all children like yourself to have the opportunity to go to school and to have a field to play football. There is a need for you to grow as an open society, for different groups to mingle and to form a single people embracing the challenges of integration, even learning the languages spoken throughout the country, and not just those in your particular ethnic group. This means embracing the marvelous risk of knowing and accepting those who are different, discovering the beauty of a reconciled fraternity, and experiencing the thrilling challenge of freely shaping your own future along that of the entire community. It is absolutely essential to avoid ostracizing groups and ghettoizing human beings. To meet all these challenges, however, there is need for peace. There is need for peace and for the help of many, indeed, of everyone. Hello. Vorrei ringraziare la vice rappresentante speciale Sara Beslognanti per averci detto che oggi è un'occasione per tutti di vedere quello che da anni sta accadendo in questo paese. Qui infatti perdura la più grande crisi di rifugiati del continente con almeno 4 milioni di figli di questa terra sfolati con l'insicurezza alimentare e la malnutrizione che colpiscono i due terzi della popolazione e con le previsioni che parlano di una tragedia umanitaria che può peggiorare ulteriormente nel corso dell'anno. Ma vorrei ringraziarla soprattutto, signora, perché lei e molti altri non sono rimasti fermi a studiare la situazione, ma si sono dati da fare. Lei, signora, ha percorso il paese, ha guardato negli occhi le madri assistendo al dolore che provano per la situazione dei figli. Mi ha colpito quando ha affermato che, nonostante tutto quello che soffrono, non si sono mai spenti sui loro volti il sorriso e la speranza. E condivido quanto ha detto su di loro, le madri, le donne, sono la chiave per trasformare il paese. Se riceveranno le giuste opportunità attraverso la loro laboriosità e la loro attitudine a custodire la vita, avranno la capacità di cambiare il volto del Sud Sudan, di dargli uno sviluppo sereno e coeso. 
ma vi prego, prego tutti gli abitanti di queste terre, la donna sia protetta, la donna sia rispettata, valorizzata e onorata. Per favore proteggere, rispettare, valorizzare e onorare ogni donna, bambina, ragazza, giovane, adulta, madre e nonna. Senza questo non ci sarà futuro. I would like to thank Deputy Special Representative Sara Baslo Nyanti for telling us that today represents an opportunity for the people to realize what has been going on for years in this country, a country with the greatest enduring refugee crisis on the continent. At least four million children of this land are displaced. Food insecurity and malnutrition affect two-thirds of the population, and forecasts predict a humanitarian tragedy that could further worsen in the course of this year. So I would like to thank you, Madam, above all because you and many others did not sit around analyzing situation, but went straight to work. You, Madam, have traveled throughout the country. You have looked into the eyes of mothers and witnessed the pain they feel for the situation of their children. I was moved when you said that despite all that they are suffering, smiles and hope have never faded from their face. I also agree with you, with what you say about them. Mothers, women are the key to transforming the country. If they receive the proper opportunity, through their industriousness and their natural gift of protecting life, they will have the ability to change the face of South Sudan. <laughs> to give it a peaceful and cohesive development, I ask you, I ask all the people of these lands to ensure that women are protected, respected, valued, and honored. Please. Respect, protect, appreciate, and honor every woman, every girl, young woman, mother and grandmother. Otherwise, there will be no future. And now, fratelli and sorelle, guardo ancora voi ai vostri occhi, stanchi ma luminosi che non hanno smarrito la speranza, alle vostre labbra, che non hanno perso la forza di pregare e di cantare. Guardo a voi che avete le mani vuote ma il cuore pieno di fede, a voi che portate dentro un passato segnato dal dolore, ma non smettete di sognare un avvenire migliore. Noi oggi, incontrandovi, vorremmo dare ali alla vostra speranza. Ci crediamo, crediamo che ora, anche nei campi per sfollati, dove la situazione del paese vi costringe purtroppo a stare, può nascere, come dalla terra sfoglia, un seme nuovo che porterà frutto. Vorrei dirvi, siete voi il seme di un nuovo Sud Sudan, il seme per una crescita fertile e rigogliosa del paese. Siete voi di tutte le diverse etnie, voi che avete patito e state soffrendo, ma che non volete rispondere al male con altro male. Voi che fin d'ora scegliete la fraternità e il perdono, state coltivando un domani migliore. Un domani che nasce oggi, figlio che siete, dalla capacità di collaborare, dalla capacità di tessere trame di comunione e percorsi di riconciliazione, con chi diverso da voi, per etnia e provvidenza, vi vive accanto. Fratelli, sorelle, siate semi di speranza, nei quali già si intravede l'albero di un giorno, speriamo vicino, porterà frutto. 
Sì, sarete voi gli alberi che assorbiranno l'inquinamento di anni di violenze e restituiranno l'ossigeno della fraternità. È vero, ora siete piantati dove non volete, ma proprio in questa situazione di disagio e precarietà potete tendere la mano a chi vi è accanto e sperimentare che siete radicati nella stessa umanità da qui, bisogna, da qui bisogna ripartire per riscoprirsi fratelli e sorelle, figli in terra del Dio del Cielo, Padre di tutti. Brothers and sisters, once more I look at you. I see your eyes weary but bright, eyes that have not lost hope. I see your mouths which have not lost the strength to pray and to sing. I see you with empty hands, but hearts full of faith. You bear the burden of a painful past, yet you never stop dreaming of a better future. In our meeting today, we would like to give wings to your hope. We hope and believe that now, Even in the camps for displaced persons, where sadly you are forced to live due to the situation in your country, a new seed can sprout as from the dry and barren soil. A new seed that will bear rich fruit. That is why I want to tell you that you are the seed of a new South Sudan. A seed for fertile and lush growth of this country. You, from all your different ethnic groups, you have suffered and are still suffering. You who do not want to respond to evil with more evil. You, who choose fraternity and forgiveness, are even now cultivating a better tomorrow. A tomorrow that is being born today, where you find yourselves from your ability to cooperate, to weave waves of communion and paths of reconciliation with those who, while different from you in terms of ethnic, ethnicity and origin, are your neighbors. Brothers and sisters, be seeds of hope, which make it possible for us already to glimpse the tree that one day, hopefully in the near future, will bear fruit. Yes, you will be the trees that absorb the pollution of years of violence and restore the oxygen of fraternity. True, right now you are planted where you do not want to be, but precisely from this situation of hardship and uncertainty, you can reach out to those around you and experience that you are all rooted in the one human family. From here, you must make a new start to realize that you are all brothers and sisters, children on earth of God in heaven, the father of us all. Carissimi, a ricordarci che una pianta nasce da un seme sono le radici. È bello che qui la gente tenga molto le radici. Ho letto che in queste terre le radici non vanno mai dimenticate perché gli attentati ci ricordano che siamo chi siamo e quale deve essere la nostra strada. Senza di loro siamo perduti, impauditi e senza bussola. Non c'è futuro senza passato. In Sud Sudan i giovani crescono facendo tesoro dei racconti degli anziani e se la narrativa di questi anni è stata caratterizzata dalla violenza è possibile, anzi è necessario inaugurare a partire da voi una nuova, una nuova narrativa dell'incontro dove quanto si è partito non sia dimenticato. 
avenga mi canto dalla luce della fraternità. Una narrativa che metta al centro non solo la tragicità della cronaca, ma il desiderio ardente della pace. Siate voi, giovani di etnie diverse, le prime pagine di questa narrativa. Se i conflitti, se i conflitti le violenze e gli odi hanno strappato via dai buoni ricordi le prime pagine di vita di questa Repubblica, siete voi a riscriverne la storia di pace. Io vi ringrazio per la vostra forza di animo e per tutti i vostri gesti di bene che sono tanto graditi a Dio e rendono prezioso ogni giorno che vivete. Dear friends, to speak of roots reminds us that every plant springs up from a seed. It is beautiful, it is a beautiful thing that people here can care deeply about their roots. I remember reading that in this lands, the roots must never be forgotten because the ancestors remind us who, are, who we are and what our path should be. Without them, we are lost, frightened, and without compass. There is no future without past. In South Sudan, young people grow up benefiting from the stories of the elderly, and although the chapter of recent years has been one of violence, it is possible and indeed necessary to launch a new chapter starting with yourselves. A new chapter of encounter which does not forget past sufferings but radiates the joyful light of fraternity. A chapter that does not focus only on reports of tragedy but on an ardent desire for peace. May you, young people of different ethnicities, write the first pages of this new chapter. Although, although conflict, violence, and hatred have replaced good memories on the first pages of the life of this republic, you must be the ones to write its history as a history of peace. I thank you for your strength and perseverance, for all the good you do, which is so pleasing to God and enriches each day of our lives. Vorrei rivolgere una parola grata anche a quanti vi aiutano, spesso in condizioni non solo difficili ma emergenziali. Grazie alle comunità ecclesiali per le loro opere che meritano di essere sostenute. Grazie ai missionari, alle organizzazioni umanitarie e internazionali, in particolare alle Nazioni Unite per il grande lavoro che svolgono. Certo un paese non può sopravvivere di sostegni esterni, per lo più avendo un territorio tanto ricco di risorse, ma loro sono estremamente necessari. Vorrei anche onorare i tanti operatori umanitari che hanno perso la vita e risultare al rispetto per chi aiuta e per le strutture di sostegno alla popolazione che non possono diventare obiettivi di assalto e vandalismo. Accanto ai soccorsi urgenti, credo sia molto importante in prospettiva futura accompagnare la popolazione sulla via dello sviluppo, ad esempio aiutandola ad apprendere tecniche aggiornate per l'agricoltura e l'allevamento, così da facilitare una crescita più autonoma. A tutti chiedo con il cuore in mano, soccorriamo il Sud Sudan, non lasciamo sola la sua popolazione che tanto ha sofferto e soffre. In addition, I would like to address a word of gratitude to all those who help you, often in conditions of hardship, but also in emergency situations. I thank the ecclesial communities for their efforts, which deserve to be supported, the missionaries and the humanitarian and international organizations, in particular, the United Nations, for the important work they do. To be sure, a country cannot survive on external means of support 
especially if it possesses a territory so rich in resources. At the present time, however, those means of support are badly needed. I would also like to honor the humanitarian workers who have lost their lives and to plead for respect for those who offer help and for the structures that assist the population. They should not become targets of assaults and vandalism. Together with urgently needed aid, I believe that it is very important in the future to accompany the population on the path of development. For example, by helping them to learn up-to-date practices in the areas of agriculture and livestock management, so as to facilitate a more independent growth. I plead with everyone from the heart, let us help South Sudan. Let us not abandon its population. They have suffered and they continue to suffer so greatly. Conclusione, desidero rivolgere un pensiero a tanti refugiati su sudanesi che stanno fuori dal paese e quanti non possono rientrare perché il loro territorio è stato occupato. Sono loro vicino e auspico che possano tornare a essere protagonisti del futuro della loro terra, contribuendo al suo sviluppo in modo costruttivo e pacifico. Mi ha chiesto Rebecca, mi ha chiesto una benedizione speciale per i bambini del sud sud, proprio perché possiate crescere tutti insieme nella pace. Noi tre come fratelli daremo la benedizione. Il mio fratello Justin e il mio fratello Jan insieme daremo la benedizione. Con essa vi raggiungo la benedizione di tanti fratelli e sorelle cristiani nel mondo che vi abbracciano, vi incoraggiano, sapendo che in voi, nella vostra fede, nella, vostra, nella forza interiore, nei vostri sogni di pace, in conclusion, I would like to mention the many South Sudanese refugees living outside the country and those who cannot return because their territories have been occupied. I am close to them and I trust that they can once again take up an active role in shaping the future of their land and contribute to its development in a constructive and peaceful manner. Nyakor Rebecca, you asked me for a special blessing upon the children of South Sudan, precisely so that all of you might grow up together in peace. The three of us will give you a blessing. That blessing will be very special since I will be giving it together with my brothers Justin and Ian. With it comes the blessing of so many of our Christian brothers and sisters in the world who embrace and encourage you, knowing that you, your faith, your inner strength, and your dreams of peace radiate all the beauty of our shared humanity.
Lord is you and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you keenly and give you peace. May Almighty Lord bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
جديد بلا اي دي بي من خلال غاده بتام يعمل الصف ويمشي للمرزيليوم وفي ناس بيشيلوكم للمحل ده فامشوا بنظام امشوا ورا الغايب بتاعكم بعد ما بوب يمشي يمشي بوب كوا بعد هو كسف Ya kamko, ya kamko, ya kamko.